Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Oh, yeah. Two guys who finished last in New Hampshire, so we're suspending our campaign. What's up, kids? You are listening to the Chad and Cheese Podcast. I'm your co-host, Joel Vision Pro Cheeseman. And this is Chad Zombie Killer So Wash. And on this show, LinkedIn says, bend over, a good week for Uncle Joe, and Google may have a hostage crisis on its hands. Let's do this. Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. Chad, Chad did you did you get up? Did you buy a pair of Vision Pros? Are you on, are you on the waiting list? Like what? You mean the ones that cost like three million dollars a piece? No, I did not. I did not get them. <laughs> three thirty five hundred. So oh. it's. Oh, it's okay. for the it's for the people. It's a product yeah. for the people, Chad. <laughs> product for the people. Blue collar people all over the world will have they, them. No, they I, sold out. I was pretty shocked. Now maybe you know they had twenty five of them. Yeah, now. there still. there are a lot of people in the world who have more money than they know what to do with, and just uh, you know drop the credit card yeah. to buy them. But uh, and, and yeah, they're not so. line workers. I'm going to say that. I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there. I'm going to generalize. They're not line workers who have thirty five hundred bucks. <laughs> Pretty sure the UAW is not going to be putting cars together with uh, the Apple Vision Pro uh, on, no. on their heads. On their although, heads. Yep. although I did do some zombie killing this week at the Sandbox VR this last weekend. Okay, uh, that was I mean that was only fifty bucks a pop, and it was like a, an hour and a half in total. Get there, check in, mm-hmm. uh, all you know, training. Then you got uh, equipped, get all your equipment put on. Uh, there were five of us that were fighting zombies. I mean, it was a blast. We, sh- we should have a Chad and Cheese VR zombie killing event in Indianapolis, or there are many cities uh, across the U.S. that we could we could actually do these. It'd be it'd be a blast. Good the, team build. Yeah, this wasn't fifty dollars per zombie, was it? It was like fifty yeah. and all the zombies you can kill. I hope. Yes, yes, it was <laughs> it was a blast. Yeah, totally, uh, literally and figuratively. Yeah, uh, and speaking of zombies, uh, I know a few Bills fans mm. uh, who have been walking around like uh, they're wow. dead <clears throat> um, after Hello, that loss. Wide right to the to the Chiefs. Yeah, that was so. I mean, only the Bills, Ooh. maybe the Browns or the Lions, Ooh. but the Lions, of course. So those that don't know, we have our final four in the NFL. We have San Francisco mm. taking on Detroit, and we have uh, Baltimore taking on kansas city what what's your take on how this is going to play out i mean kansas city they've been playing like shit all year but they've bumbled into wins Mm -hmm. it i mean they've just they've just won and and there there's the bills to to show you that uh the ravens i mean they've been playing hot they're a strong team i hope to see them win uh and then you've got uh obviously at the end of the day i want to see the detroit lions win yeah period Right. Yeah. They're the massive underdog. Uh, all the other all the others have won before. I want to see the, the, the Lions come out of this as Super Bowl champs. It's going to be hard, but I, I hope it, I hope that's what happens. Yeah. When this thing started, I was praying for a Cleveland Detroit uh, Super Bowl, oh, which would probably so break awesome. would probably break the NFL. Uh, but if, if I can, Internet. if I can get the original <laughs> Browns, who are the Baltimore Ravens, playing Detroit I guess that's as as uh, close as we can do the the Lions mm-hmm. in a Super Bowl blows my blows me away because that yeah. just doesn't happen uh I read something that said 
that the Lions would consider bringing Barry Sanders back on a one-day contract <clears throat> and have him play one down somehow that if they win, he can get a he can get a ring, which I think would be a feel good story. But probably well, I got to say, happen. Stafford going to the Rams, winning with the Rams, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that was I mean, he was at, obviously the longtime quarterback at, at at Detroit. Now, hopefully, watching that on the other side, <laughs> that would be amazing with a Jared Goff, right? Yeah. I mean, just 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 Detroit overall, they deserve a win. Yeah. Now, your wife is a big Packers fan, and. The Packers should have won that game. She, is she is she pretty uh, – well, she's got to be heartened by the fact that they're the, the youngest team in the, in the NFL. Jordan yeah. Love looks like a real quarterback, and they, they, they should be playing this weekend. She's got to be pretty I've got to say, the, the Green Bay Packers know how to bring up a quarterback, right? And they're about the only team that does it this way. They had Aaron Rodgers. They, they got Jordan Love behind Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers, much like they had Aaron Rodgers behind uh, Brett Favre, right? So they, they get them there. They get them – knowing the system, uh, knowing the play. I mean, just all the way through, they know how to build quarterbacks, which I thought was amazing. Unlike Chicago, where you throw, you know, Justin Fields into the freaking lion's mm-hmm. den right out of the gate. So, yeah, I, I mean, I like the Packers just from their, their the way that they look at football. I mean, they're, yeah. they're wholly owned by, you know, Green Bay. They're mm-hmm. just, they're just an entirely different animal when it comes to, uh, sports. And I've never liked Aaron Rodgers, so I'm glad he's fucking out of there. <laughs> and I hope Jordan Love kicks ass, takes names, so that yeah. you know Aaron Rodgers can just be smoked as nothing in the past. There's got to be an employment lesson in there somewhere. Let's see: recruit well, train oh, well, know. upskill, and you win people. Let's uh, look to the Packers. Look to the Packers for guidance. Everybody makes sense. Makes oh, sense. Man. We got a lot to cover. So shout out. Yep. Quick shout out to our friend, Julie Callie guys oh, who listen. Yeah. Uh, if you listen to the show, yeah. you know that we've done quite a few shows with Julie. We had a series on recruit marketing. That's all in the archives. If you want to go to chadcheese.com. Yes. but uh, Julie is now the CMO at Linsa after a stint at recruitmentmarketing.com and Recruitix. She's a, she goes back to SEO days, uh, oh, God, in the yeah. mid two thousands. Uh, that was with six figure jobs, I think. Uh, so she's been around a while. She's going to kick ass. Uh, we, we're going to see her at some point down the road. But shout out to uh, to Julie. Great person. I hope it's obviously a great opportunity. Uh, go kick ass. We're cheering for you here at Chad and Cheese. Yeah, she might be in Budapest this week because uh, a lot of the the leadership team, uh, Gergo, uh, Joey Stubbs is finding his way over there a lot, yep. uh, is in Budapest, which actually where my daughter lives. So hopefully mm-hmm. she gets a chance to go over there, enjoy a little Eastern block. Uh, it, it's a great place to be. It's a great place to be. Congratulations, not just to to Julie, who is a fucking superstar, but also to Lenza yep. uh, to be able to to have somebody on staff with that kind of cred. All right. So winning, you know, who's winning? Our listeners are winning. Now it, oh. it's, it's funny because our listeners are now watching us on YouTube. So I'm getting pictures from listeners who are watching us, uh, on big screen TVs in their living room. So kids pop Scary. some corn, pour some drinks and watch a little Chad and cheese. But dude, seriously, this is surreal. I mean, people are listening to us. That's one thing in their cars, uh-huh. on the train, wherever they're doing, but in their front room, front room. Hey, TVs are in bedrooms too, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying there may not be quite an aphrodisiac like Ooh. watching the Chad and oh, Cheese podcast. I'm just saying. I'm point. just saying. Yeah. Well, <laughs> speaking of boner killers, uh, one company got uh, punched in the mouth oh, recently. Jesus. You've probably seen oh, this yeah. on uh, on on the socials. Uh, yes. My shout out goes out to Brittany Peach. No, that apparently is not a stripper name. That is her real name. <laughs> and she took her employer, I guess past employer at this point, to the woodshed. Uh, check out this TikTok uh, condensed version, the real version. If you're going to go check it out, search Brittany Peach. Or it sounds like a, a Mario and Luigi uh, character, <laughs> Princess Peach, Brittany Peach. Anyway, uh, so let's check out that video and, and that sound bite from uh, Brittany sticking it to her employer. Here we go. You are not being singled out on this. Your peers are also being collectively um, assessed on performance. This is a collective collaboration for Cloudflare. So I just want to clarify that piece. 
I won't be able to add any kind of specifics on numbers or. Wait, yeah, no. Can you explain for me why Brittany Peach is getting let go? The I won't be able to go into specifics for numbers. Ouch. Wait, why though? Yeah. I just started. I've been working extremely hard. Just because I haven't closed anything that has nothing to do with my performance on a three month ramp with just one month with two ho major holidays in the middle. I don't think that has anything to do with why I should be let go, if that makes sense. So I really need an answer and an explanation as to why Brittany Peach is getting let go, not why Cloudflare decided to hire too many people and are now. <laughs> many people and let go. I love that. That's Very the real smart. answer. I would rather just you tell me that instead of making up some bullshit and telling <laughs> a job from someone I've never met before. If you can respect that. Yeah, I can totally respect that. And I don't think Dom or myself today is going to give you any clarity or answers that's going to um, meet the expectations that you're communicating to us, Brittany. So I can't speak to. So am point. I getting let go for no reason? <laughs> yes. If you guys can't give me. A yes. I'm happy to follow up with you separately to give you the data that was calibrated. I'll need to speak with um, revenue leadership specifically. Calibrated. See if we can get that for you. But Dom and I. You... <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> she might be a listener, Chad, because she dropped the whole you hire too many people. And now you're you're paying you're paying for it. We've talked about that on the show many times about these oh, companies dude. overhired. Yes. And now people like Brittany, who clearly yes. shouldn't be on the chopping block, getting the axe. Four months. She's been in the in the job, and it's a sales yeah. job. So you've got a three month <laughs> ramp where you're going through training and and all these things. Uh, that fourth month, which it sounds like was December, is a, a hell of a month to be starting. Oh, mm -hmm. I mean, let, let me just tell you, Q four is not the easiest to start in. Um. But Cloudflare, what did they do? They sent a couple of HR people in instead of the manager to be able to talk. And, and yeah. I got to say, as, an, as a very young manager back in the day when I had to fire people, I was told by my CEO that I need to sit down, shut up, be in the room and let HR do what HR did. I mm -hmm. learned that was wrong. That was bullshit. Um, we are humans. We should be treating other humans like humans or we're going to get a shitty brand. And these guys, I mean, Cloudflare, I, I don't even know how yeah. this is going to hit her brand, but they also had many uh, openings on their website when they were going through this process. Whew, she needs a drink. She does need a drink, uh, which is why she should head out to chadcheese.com, click that oh, free link. Cool. And and register for a chance to win uh, multiple prizes, but uh, booze is one of them. We're talking yes. a bourbon selection from each of us. Yep. Uh, our friends at Text Colonel are, are powering that one. Uh, free beer, mm -hmm. geez, a cold beer might might go good with that layoff. Uh, good. That's from our friends at Aspen Tech Labs. Uh, of course, we got T-shirts. We're in the development stage of of getting some new stuff. So if you get a if you get a T-shirt from us, it's uh, from our friends at JobGet. And if it's your birthday, Chad. You could win yes. a lovely bottle of rum, mm. and that is from our friends at Plum. That's right. I said Plum. Uh, really? <laughs> can you feel the tension? No, in the air I can't. Right I know I can. I can feel it all the way down. All mouth. right. <laughs> Celebrating another trip around the sun, our listeners, Tony Leoy, Stephanie Krishnan, Matthew Miller, Ed John Zatuski from Philly, Lynette Phillips, Rich Carrington. <laughs> Kalia Gromlick, Shelly Kars, Ben Stewart, mm -hmm. Chris Amato, Dandy Don Sabatino, Josh, Jay-Z, Roethlisberger, Zwain. There and last, is. And last but not least. <laughs> that's right. Our good friend Adam Gordon from Scotland yes. celebrates another trip around the sun. Adam, I know you're listening. I know you're listening. So happy birthday. Have a little bit of scotch. The Petey kind on me, my friend. Happy birthday <laughs> to everybody that's listening. Oh, what time is it? Oh, you know what time it is. Brought to you by Shaker Recruitment Marketing. It's time for events, kids. Uh, TA Week is upon us. It is next week. Mm -hmm. And on Monday, the 29th, from 2 to 5, that specific time, uh, we will be with Qualify at the San Diego Zoo. Now, if you're one of the first 50 to sign up, 
you can actually get a free ticket to the zoo. Ooh. Not Ooh. to mention, have, have a little <laughs> close and personal time with your favorite animals, the Chad and Cheese. So just go to chadcheese.com slash events. You can register. It's right there with the koala. Looks like this. It looks like this in the header. Uh, when the events get up and running uh, that, that day during TA week, we're actually going to be in the qualify booth. So drinking, causing ruckus and doing interviews. So you can see us there at the qualify booth. Then Tuesday night after the event reception drinks, uh, we're heading just a mile down the road to, you know, in and out burger, in and out burger (laughs) with collab work. With collab work. So yeah. I'll be cheating on my diet and, and get over <laughs> it. Uh, I'm getting a free animal style burger. Yes, Joel. I said free I in it. and out burger. Yep. So look for the collab work team during the you know TA week events. They'll have stacks of these free cards that are for, for free in and out burgers. And then again, Come to In-N-Out Burger. It's only about a, a mile down. We'll probably mm-hmm. take a little walk, maybe Uber. Uh, have a little Chad and Cheese time. Have a little animal style with your with your night. And uh, enjoy some time with the collab work team. I'm, I'm pretty stoked. Double-double with chopped peppers, fries well done, mm. and a chocolate shake. That is wow. what I am wow. talking about, Chad. Then we've got Transform, which is going to happen in March, March 11th through 14th, where we're going to be at the win for Transform in Vegas. Our our buddy, EEOC Commissioner Keith Sonderling, is going to be there, plus over 3,000 attendees, 100 investors, 500 startups, 300 speakers. Damn. Damn. First time, first time that we've been to uh, Transform, and I... I'm fucking stoked. So if you guys are not, listener, listen up. Go to chadcheese.com slash events. If you're not going to these events, mm-hmm. especially if you're in San Diego, go. If you're thinking about, I don't know, hitting a little Vegas time, go. Go to chadcheese.com slash events and register. Don't forget in March, we're going to go see our friend Levin uh, in Europe. So if you're out there in Amsterdam uh, in March, <laughs> Come check us out and have some Belgian beer along the, uh, Ooh. the, what's the river in Amsterdam? Is it called a river in Amsterdam? It's not like the Michigan river. I don't know. Is now, it a bayou, a bayou in Amsterdam? Bayou, Probably these little boats, little, they oh my just come God. to Amsterdam. And we're, and, yeah. And we're jumping out of, uh, the, uh, the whatchamacallit in Vegas at some point. Anyway, that's so May. much, yeah, that's so May. much travel. Oh God. Yeah. That's we, we're going to be everywhere guys. You're going to be so sick of us when this is over. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Topics. All right, Chad, LinkedIn is pissing off everybody. According to the sourcing community, LinkedIn has apparently made significant changes to public profiles, Hmm. removing headline about experience and education sections. This reduction could affect sourcing tools and competitors relying on LinkedIn data. While tools like Phantom Buster and SalesQL still work, LinkedIn X-Ray's functionality is limited with some information now inaccessible. Certain details such as school grades are no longer visible on public profiles. Of course, all of this drives people to LinkedIn's internal search, which requires a subscription to Recruiter, Recruiter Lite, or Sales Navigator for access to fuller data. This isn't a money grab, is it, Chad? What are, what are your thoughts on this news? So after the high Q ruling, How can anybody be surprised that this is happening? I mean, we were talking about this years ago when little bitty baby high Q labs was taking on LinkedIn Mm -hmm. for this same exact information grab, right? So, you know, the big question is, does the profile belong to, does your profile belong to you or does it belong to LinkedIn? Well, LinkedIn won. High Q got smashed and now get ready. They're going to be building higher walls in that wall garden, which means higher prices. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you know? Th- the question is, what will Seek Out, Find Them, and Hire EZ do if they're locked out or they get crunched with higher mm-hmm. prices? Right. And let's face it; those platforms are superior search products compared to LinkedIn tools. So this feels like a very anti-competitive, mm. very anti-innovation uh, move by LinkedIn. That, to be quite frank, we've all been waiting for. Uh, will the vendors get locked out? Will prices go even higher? Hiring companies are already paying through the fucking nose when it comes to the recruiter seats. 
Um, and we need competition in this space. We need new tools. We need new infrastructure. And this stifles all of that. But last but not least, I can, I can feel what's happening already. LinkedIn is going to say, hey, it's all about privacy. No, bullshit. Don't buy the, the, the privacy excuse from LinkedIn when they throw it at you, right? Because that's bullshit. If LinkedIn was worried about privacy, they wouldn't be selling your data already, okay? So uh -huh. yes, this is really anti-competitive. And I don't know, I'd be throwing the Microsoft name in there and I'd be going full antitrust. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like you're you're wishing for our friend Elon to uh, you know get his LinkedIn killer uh, built no, in in fast I, I fashion not. so that uh, so not. that the the trust issues go away or maybe Google uh, could finally wake yeah. up and provide well, a product. Like that's, is one fastest to take that's over for another? I know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Facebook. I don't know. Hey, TikTok. Let China let China take over. Um, no. So higher prices for sure. No, yeah. like. You're going to like people bitch about LinkedIn's pricing. Well, guess what? Yes. You're going to really bitch when they go up uh, next year. Um, yeah. If if I'm a service like Seekout, I'm really nervous. Uh, and we talk about uh, Anoop's relationship with Bill Gates and they're real friendly with Microsoft. Now, maybe there's a little hush hush deal where Seekout will be OK or they'll be able to, to access stuff like they normally are. But yeah. this clearly looks like a moat build, a, a, a monopoly grab by LinkedIn. Um, and you can't blame them because everyone's letting them do it, whether it's the justice system, the government, the consumers, uh, this is where this, so number one on that is, is, uh, cut prices are going to go up. And unfortunately when we have monopolies, quality typically goes down. So don't expect a lot of innovation, uh, with those price increases, no. unfortunately at, at LinkedIn. Now a little history lesson, for the kids out there, sourcing used to be this thing where the real freakazoids were doing it, right? Yeah. The Shallies, the Strouds, the the Levy, like the Shannons. Uh, you'd go to these sessions in 2005 about uh, 80 search engines to use that no one knows about to find people. And then yeah. eventually solutions were created to take the Brainiac freakazoid sourcer out of the picture. Basically, you can be a common person, not know anything about Boolean searches, and you can find people with our database. And that worked really mm -hmm. well as long as LinkedIn played the game. LinkedIn's not playing the game anymore. So not only are the vendors going to be at risk, but the the people who are sourcers in quotes, but not really mm -hmm. sourcers like, like the Steve Levies of the world, um, what are they going to do when they actually have to learn what those folks know. So I think we're going to go back to the future where the freaks and geeks at SourceCon are now going to be the ones that rule the world. Cause you look at posters starting to go up about, okay, LinkedIn has fucked us. How do we get around it? How do we, how do we do searches on Google and other places to like circumvent the, yeah. the what's on LinkedIn? Because we all know LinkedIn's not going to block Google's uh, search or spiders because they still need to be on linked or uh, Google searches. So that's one thing I think if you can leverage Google, like these folks know, then you're probably going to be safe in terms of LinkedIn. So my points were simply like, uh, you know, we, we were super geeky, then not so much. We're going back to super geeky prices are going up. And I think, uh, if you're, if you're heading SourceCon, and I recently did a show with our friend, Jim Stroud, I think there's going to be an escalated uh, interest in what sourcing tools and tricks and things are going out there because a lot of people are going to freak out when uh, things they get from LinkedIn, they can't get anymore. Yeah. I think it's interesting because a lot of these tools probably have a database built that was LinkedIn in the first place. Now, the yep. big difference is being able to enrich those profiles moving forward, right? But at least you have a base of information. Uh, mm -hmm. This is going to, I believe, and I hope, actually push the rest of it, the industry, uh, to stop being so fucking lazy. Okay. We've talked about this several times. I remember talking to Gary Zukowski when he created tweet my jobs mm -hmm. way back in the day when, when, when we were blasting jobs on Twitter, I asked Gary, I was like, what happens dude, if Twitter just cut you off? He's like, I'm fucked. Right. <laughs> it's the exact, the exact same type of scenario. If you lean that hard, on any other platform that you don't own or you don't have control over, mm -hmm. you put yourself in this situation. 
You put yourself in this situation. So what this is going to do is it's going to do a couple of different things. First and foremost, a lot of those bigger platforms already have the data. The question is, how do they now flip it into something mm -hmm. that can be more enriching, right? Um, then we've got to take a look at infrastructure, building new infrastructure. We've talked about that with CV wallet. There's another reason to be able to escalate and amplify that type of, that type of, uh, of platform. Yeah. And last but not least, now, maybe employers, when they get stuck with this new bill, they'll start looking at who's actually using the platform, right? And they'll cut their, they'll cut their seats in half because I can tell you, being on the staffing side, I was with uh, I was with RSR for a few years. We looked at that data a lot, and we paired off a lot of seats because we focused on the business of recruiting, not just because it was our job. So we really focused on making sure that we can make that more efficient. So companies hopefully will make it more efficient, and they will just cut those bills in half, or maybe even quarter them. So at the end of the day, I think this is going to be good for the industry. Um, it's going to be bad for LinkedIn unless, again, we've talked about it before. They can't just put a, a jet engine on the LinkedIn Cessna because yeah. it won't work. They're going yeah. to have to rebuild. Yeah. And hopefully this uh, encourages or motivates employers to look at their own database that they've probably spent millions of dollars to build. That is yeah. their own little LinkedIn uh, that they can access as well as upskilling, training their folks so they don't leave, keeping retention high. Uh, getting yep. off the teat of LinkedIn is a good thing <laughs> for everybody. Trust me, that's yes. evil, evil LinkedIn. All right, let's go into some money and acquisition news, shall we? Uh, first up, England's Hewler. Hewler, Hewler I hardly even Hewler. know her, has secured 1.5 million pounds in funding. The startup is a SaaS platform promising to simplify employee communications and information access, emphasizing the goal of making work simple in the era of hybrid and remote work. The funding, along with a previous round in December 22, brings Hewler's total funding to 3.5 million pounds. Chad, your thoughts on Hewler? So Hewler is doing for employee engagement through tying uh, these atrocious UIs together. Uh, or the, the HCM stack, let's say, what Poetry is looking to do for recruiter enablement, right? So so Adam Gordon, who we talked about earlier, happy birthday, um, he, he's building a recruiter desktop that pretty much pulls together all those different platforms so that a recruiter just has one place to go. This is a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole on the human capital management side of the house. And all of those platforms pretty much have shit UI. Some yeah. might have halfway decent, but together they're just horrible. So to be able to tie together great employee engagement is, is incredibly key, right? In employee experience and then employee engagement. So I think platforms like this are incredibly smart as we've talked about it for years mm -hmm. is it you know is it is it smart trying to become the 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 platform that rules them all no i have i have pivoted from that hard it is the platform that ties together all of mm -hmm. the other platforms it's a hell of a lot easier to build it's not easy but it's easier to build and from a fluidity standpoint tech debt standpoint it's it's easier to maintain yeah this to me feels like a bridge funding round. Um, oh, yeah. Hewler, Hewler is a knife in a gunfight. Um, whether you agree or, or not with whether Deal, Remote, Oyster, Velocity Global, High Bob, Personio, et cetera, are the future of, of platform is, and bringing hybrid and remote workers together. Um, Hewler doesn't have the, the money to compete with those folks. So my guess is this business was started- they don't? No. Hybrid they and remote work? No. I mean, they tie those platforms together. And that was one of the things that, that they we talked about actually a year ago yeah. on the Euro show on Buy or Sell. Okay. Well, how do I sound smart on Hewler now? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> this, is why we, this is why we don't live stream. Well, there's, there's also conflicting information that's being provided because I see rounds in 2020. This is from Crunchbase. Rounds from 2020 for 4 million. January of 2023, when we talked about them on the European show for 2 million, and this is a 1.5 million round. So they've got three different, and, and it's around $8.5 million uh, or pounds, I'm sorry, in 
in funding. So yeah, I mean, there's conflicting. It, it, the article that we read doesn't match up with my research. So this largely feels like a feature uh, to a lot of businesses, I think, that have money that can buy products like this. You look at, you mentioned Adam Gordon. Look, this is a great product. To give employees a tool where they can take everything that they want to know, whether it's education, uh, em other employee activities, you name it, they can bring it in one platform. They can kind of customize that to whatever they want. Uh, being a remote or hybrid workforce, people are not in the office like they used to be. So a tool like this makes a lot of sense. I just think it's 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 the goal of this company is not to be a product, but more of a feature that an ATS or uh, you know a, a, a paradox potentially could uh, create as as a, an extension of what they are already doing. So not a ton of money, uh, not a lot of heat here, but I think potentially uh, an acquisition play in the next forty eight to uh, seventy two months. Yeah, I. I think it's genius to be quite frank. You've got all these different UIs that are shit. You tie them together and you make them beautiful. And that's how you get people to actually use your platforms. And that's one of the issues that we have adoption for many of the users that are out there. Why? Because it's, it's clunky, it's shitty, it's horrible. If you have them go through the same experience and it's nice and it's fluid, um, that again, we're humans. We like to look at pretty stuff. This is gonna, this just makes it a lot easier. Mm-hmm. All right, Ceridian, small little company, you may have heard of them, <laughs> is set to acquire Illumi, a learning experience platform provider. The move aligns with the growing global learning management system market estimated to reach 55 billion by 2032. Chad, your thoughts on this move by Ceridian? So we're going to start to see big lumbering systems like Ceridian gobble up other proven platforms like Illumi mm -hmm. as a, a way to eject pieces, parts of their old tech into the ether. So instead of ditching an old system and building from the ground up, Ceridian is amputating a limb and replacing it with a bionic limb. So the, the hard part is when Ceridian has to replace the heart of the system because you can replace all the limbs fairly easily, depending on how you integrate, right? But the core, the heart that drives everything, that's going to be the hard part. So what we're seeing here is is a basic evolution. I mm -hmm. like the whole $6 million man kind of scenario, yep. but, uh, but, but you still have to replace the core someday. How are they going to do that? That's going to be the hard part for Ceridian, but very smart. Yep. Uh, totally agree. Look, we've, we've talked uh, on many episodes about this being the year of M&A. You're going to have a lot of companies yeah. that have run out of money. A lot of startups are like, what's our next move? You know, raising money isn't what it was like in 2021. Uh, it's not flowing like it was. So our next move is probably an acquisition. Uh, so for these guys, a Ceridian makes perfect sense. For Ceridian, it makes perfect sense as well. Uh, we talked about LinkedIn having more control. So bringing stuff back in, upskilling, educating, retaining employees uh, in the way that Illumi's product does makes total sense. And we're going to have a lot of stories like this uh, going going into the future. Uh, probably a little bit of an aqua hire as well. Uh, big mm -hmm. companies can bring really good employees, startup founders, et cetera, uh, to the company for a pretty small price tag from what they would normally have to do uh, anyway. By the way, the market, uh, Wall Street loved this move. Uh, the stock was up quite a bit uh, after the announcement. So Wall Street as well likes what Ceridian's doing in addition to Chad and Cheese. All right, next up, New York-based FinTech Daily Pay has raised $75 million in equity financing, and the company secured a $100 million expansion of its credit facility. The latest equity raise valued Daily Pay at $1.75 billion on a pre-money basis, marking a 75% increase. Wow. Yeah. Daily Pay, which offers an on-demand pay solution for corporates, Corporate plans to use the funds to accelerate product development and expand into new markets and categories. Chad, your thoughts on getting paid daily. daily so this pay. is Ceridian's next acquisition. but, but That's a bigger a big, acquisition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a big core next gen pay system. Uh, let's say ADP, they could swallow the earth, right? Uh, th th you want to add again, these next gen pay systems to your stack. 
uh, and again, you, you get rid of that old system, mm-hmm. you put on the new system or you, you know, obviously use it in conjunction with, uh, but at the end of the day, this is literally just an upgrade in your capabilities. And this, uh, we're going to see over and over and over as these big monolith systems, uh, start to replace old dilapidated, uh, dilapidated tech. Mm-hmm. So when Chad and I were growing up, if we wanted to watch a show, let's, let's call it Married with Children. Uh, we wanted to watch Al Bundy and, and Kelly and the gang. Uh, we, we had to wait. We had to wait yes. a week till the yes. show came out. If it wasn't in season, we had to wait four months, five months for the new season to come out. Yeah. Nobody thinks like that anymore. People think, I want to watch this. Like, yeah. give it to me now. Whether I'm, I'm on the go, I'm at home, wherever, I'm I want it right on now. On demand. And pay is no different. Uh, right. my, my 17 year old gets paid every two weeks and, and on that two week, like sort of uh, milestone because it goes in his savings, which I control. He's on my ass asking about <laughs> where's my money, bitch. Uh, he, he should be getting paid <clears throat> daily or whenever he wants after he works a shift. This is just a sign of the times. Uh, and this is where stuff is going. I think additionally, this is going to be the brand that is the Coke of the sort of daily pay on demand solutions. Yeah. They're talking yeah. about IPO in 2025. I totally like when, when you are a 75% increase in valuation, clearly you have, you have told a story that says we're going to grow immensely in the next year. So, next gen, uh, baby. yeah. It so, is. so say those nuggets, we don't give stock advice, but mm-hmm. this is a stock that is, is going to be one. I think that will excite a lot of people. Because it goes beyond recruiting. It's like a lifestyle. This is a change. This is a sea change in how people are paid. Um, and good on them. Good on them. Yeah. Uh, excited. Exciting company. And looking forward to talking about them more in the future. All right. Bold.com, B-O-L-D, has acquired Flex Jobs. Terms were not disclosed. Flex Jobs, based in Colorado and founded in 2007, offers a database of remote and flexible job listings that are hand screened for legitimacy. The brand is expected to be preserved under bold.com's ownership. Chad, your thoughts. I think the hand screen thing is going to go away. Uh, and uh, bold.com. That's a, that's a great domain, but I bad. have never, I've never heard of these guys. Have Out you? of Puerto Rico. How, how often do we talk about a Puerto Rican hundred. company? 700 global employees. Yeah. I mean, just amazing. Anyway, yeah. Flex Jobs launched in 2006 with a single round of funding and before remote and hybrid was really a thing. Yeah. So they waited patiently and they got their, their, their payday. And, I, and we talk a lot about startups on this show, but I'd like to say there are amazing smaller mm-hmm. job sites and recruitment tools that provide, that have been around for years, that provide great services and more importantly, clear mad cash every mm-hmm. month. Uh, not every company has to go public to be successful. So kudos to Sarah Sutton and Flex Jobs. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what Bold actually does to the site. Because I can guarantee you there's not going to be hand ringing or shifting or sifting or any of that that's going to be happening. They're going to they're gonna make this more of a, an, an efficient platform. Yeah, it's a curious acquisition. Um, I remember Flex Jobs when they launched back when I was writing uh, Cheesehead. And it was sort of, like a better word, it was kind of bold at the time. You know, uh, mm-hmm. laptops, Wi-Fi at the coffee shop. Like we yep. just started thinking about working remotely and being flexible mm-hmm. with, you know, particularly mothers working from home and then going like. Right. So it was a cute idea and it, it took like, technology where it is today, the pandemic, um, for these guys really to get any kind of exposure. I think it was almost a lifestyle business. I, I, I don't know them that well, but when you hear about a Colorado business, you think about like, oh, I'm going skiing tomorrow. I'll be in the office, you know, after, after I'm, uh, after I'm off the slopes, uh, smoking some pot, you know, I mean, like it's, it's a, it's a very laid back view that I have, not that they were smoking pot. By the way, did you see Trump kind of accuse uh, Sununu of, of being on cocaine uh, in his in his winning speech? Anyway, sorry, I uh, I, uh, I digress. <laughs> um, so this felt like you know they've been in business for almost twenty years. Uh, you know there was no big swings, there was no big raises, even when they could have. 
uh, yeah. in 2021, a, a yeah. site called Flex Jobs that had been around since the mid aughts could have raised mm -hmm. money, like no joke. Uh, so to me, this felt like a lifestyle business. Maybe after 20 years, uh, she said it's time to move on. Uh, and there was a relationship there for whatever reason. And Bold came knocking. Re really strange company out of Puerto Rico. I think they have Warsaw, uh, Poland office and, and somewhere else. So we should dig in a little more about bold.com and what they're doing because it is a great domain and maybe they've mm -hmm. just been under the radar. Um, but yeah, this this is kind of a curious one. It's not one of those, uh, you know, round pegs in a round hole that makes sense to us. It's a little mm -hmm. bit interesting. So uh, yeah, I got nothing else but that. She might not, ha she might have enough money banked that she can just go off and do whatever the hell she wants for the rest exactly. of her life. A lot of these smaller, these smaller job sites, they're raking in cash because they yeah. have, they have a low amount of employees, right? And I mean, so overhead, they have not much overhead and yeah. they are making money hand over fist with regard to obviously the proportionality of having a very small staff, right? Sure. So being able to, to, to sock away cash, I mean, hell, she might, who knows? She might be one of the richest people uh, we don't know. Yeah. These are the, uh, you know, frozen yogurt shops in your local uh, community. <laughs> you know, the, the, the entrepreneur that has five shops and is banking $10 million, you know, 10 million net pay every year. Uh, yeah. yeah, it totally could Success, be a, a story like that. Look, she was the first one flexible job. So she had companies early cause she was the only game in town kind of doing this. They probably stuck with her for 20 years and then she ended up getting new, new customers and, and maybe she said, screw it. I'm out. I'm done after 20 years. So good on her. If that's the case. Congrats uh, to Sarah. Yeah. Another, another person having, having a good week is uh president Joe Biden. Let's talk about him yes. after the break. All right, Chad, let's talk about Uncle Joe. The United Auto Workers have endorsed President Joe Biden for re-election. Despite earlier resistance, the endorsement comes after Biden's support during a UAW picket line. Union boss Sean Fain criticized former President Trump, emphasizing Biden's commitment to the American worker. Another Biden news, robocalls went out ahead of the New Hampshire <laughs> election featuring Joe Biden's voice, and I put voice in quotes there, telling people to save their vote for November in the general election and to skip the primary. Clearly, AI's evil hand at work. Chad, your thoughts on all things Joe this week? Well, I thought it was pretty amazing. He wasn't even on the ballot in New Hampshire. They You had to write him in, yeah. and he still won 75% of the votes. Yep. That's, that's pretty fucking big. Um, but I mean, when it comes to the robocall stuff, kids strap it on because we're just getting started. I mean, the the election cycle will have people questioning what's real and what's not. We're working with we the Chad and Cheese podcast. We're working with a reputable company, Veritone, who cloned our voices for use in Portuguese, German, Spanish and French versions of this show. But some platforms allow you to upload any voice or video no matter if you have rights or not. So this is just the beginning. And a lot of these AI companies are saying, well, you know, they're using the, the impersonators uh, defense. Well, for years, <laughs> we've had voice impersonators doing this. Well, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to have to draw a line somewhere on where somebody owns their voice, they own their likeness, because this is going to get way, way, way out of, out of field very quickly. Um, and when it comes to the UAW, uh, you know, the first president to join a picket line, uh, you know, Trump went to a non-union shop and talked shit about the union. So what did you expect Sean Fain to do, right? I mean, what did you expect him to do? He's already, motherfucker's already got a chip on his shoulder as it is. And he said, Donald Trump stands against everything we stand for as a society. Damn. I mean, that that's... That's big. Now the UAW isn't as big as they used to be, but mm -hmm. they are on a march to get bigger. And this is going to be, this is going to be incredibly interesting. Yeah. 
So on the the election side, we kind of uh, we kind of talked about this uh, that mm-hmm. hit sort of Biden yeah. being the figurehead and and doing at least the the optics of that were very positive for him. And yeah, either one of us or both of us said, look, if if the UAW ends up winning this and Biden is attached to it, uh, it's going to be huge for the election and Joe Biden. Um, and here we are, right here we are with the endorsement. Let's let's make it mm-hmm. official. Um, I think there was it, some critics said it took longer than they thought, and my guess is there's some back so, sort of back room negotiation, like sort of I mean, knowing how Sean Fain operates, there might have been some real like you know screwing in like some some negotiation tactics to get something uh, that he wanted or the the union wanted. So, look, news media outlets are great about hey. Here's a national poll. Trump is leading. You know, it's it's closing the gap. It's real. Uh, people in this country, and particularly outside the country, the, who is president is basically a decision that five or so states make, and and within those five or so states, uh, it's a few precincts and counties that that decide who the president is. So when you hear like national polls, who cares? Like it doesn't. It's not a popular vote, right? There's a system here. And Michigan is one of those states uh, that's going to decide who the president is in 2024. And Chad, as you mentioned, the union is smaller than it used to be. However, there are old union guys and gals uh, that may not be yeah. working, but still respect the union. There are families yeah. with, that are attached to these workers. So mm-hmm. take each worker and maybe plus five, uh, if you could include family and and whatever. So so a Fain and the union can bring Michigan uh, to Biden, um, it may, that may be game over uh, for the presidency. So this is really, really huge um, to me for the election of, of 2024. Now on the, on the AI, yeah, <laughs> strap on, <laughs> buckle up, bend over, whatever, uh, whatever yeah. you want to use. But Get ready, this kids. is just starting, man. Um, and, and I can tell you, people my dad's age, our parents' age, will have no clue. When they yeah. get a call from Joe Biden or Donald Trump, they're going to freak out thinking it's really Donald Trump or Joe Biden. Uh, and it, it's, they won't know. Uh, and, and by the way, like governor's races, Senate races, congressional races, you don't have to be president uh, to, to like do this. And yeah. someone getting a call from their local congressman, you might be like, oh, oh shit, I've heard him on TV or her on, you know, on the news. And yeah. wow, you're really calling me? Like people will not, put the two and two together. So this is super dangerous. And when you look at, uh, you know, Trump has been pretty clear on Ukraine funding, getting out of that situation. So if I'm, if I'm Vladimir Putin, I'm, I'm calling all my cyber punks and saying like, how do we get people persuaded to get Trump in office? He's also been very anti-NATO uh, in many respects. So like, Russia is going to be on the offensive on this. And by the way, who owns TikTok? Oh, the Chinese. Well, the Chinese might have a vested interest in Russia uh, benefiting from, you know, who gets an office and what happens there. So I, I foresee some crazy stuff. 80% of it won't get reported or noticed. Uh, it'll be calls to grandma that no one hears or sees. It'll be like a, a social media post to a, a newly 18 year old that doesn't know any better. Like this is going to get really bad and it'll be a problem we have to address in 2028. It, it, it may, it may potentially like rock, uh, rock the election this year. I'm, I'm a little scared, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we saw what social media did with Cambridge Analytica yeah, that's, and that that's kids play. is nothing compared yeah. to this shit. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, we shall see. And and it's not just the, the Biden voices or the Trump voices. We're talking about celebrities that people know and love and whatnot, right? Who might have a, yeah. a, a high ranking or rating or what have you. That you. You're just not sure. So be aware, kids. Be aware. Yeah. There will be Joe Rogan shit where he's endorsing somebody <laughs> or Elon or, I mean, yeah, celebrities. Yeah. yeah this is, it's going to get crazy. It's going to get crazy. All right. Shit. Uh, Even more crazy. Oh, I mean, I, anyway, sorry. All right. From one car crash to another, uh, the future of sports illustrated is uncertain as publisher, the arena group lost the license for the iconic U S sports periodical slash magazine, the arena group, which had a 10 year licensing deal with owner authentic brands group 
reportedly missed a $3.7 million payment leading to the termination of the agreement. As a result, Ooh. Arena announced layoffs for almost all SI staff. This comes after SI was discovered publishing pieces under fake author names, speaking mm -hmm. of naughty AI, and profile images that were generated by AI for the quote-unquote authors. The future yeah. of SI remains uncertain, pending negotiations within the next 90 days. Chad, your take on SI, and frankly, what may, what may be a sign of things to come for media in general? Yeah, I think, I think SI is dead at this point. Um, and, and a lot of this does, it has to do with failed business models. It doesn't have to do with content. Okay. And that's one of the things that we have to, we have to understand is that I don't believe that Bard or chat GPT has what is necessary to make these publications rock and roll. Cause let's say for instance, like SI was a staple for anyone who cared deeply about sports. How did you know what somebody loved sports? Well, you went to their house and you saw that they had a, a sports illustrate, a, illustrated on the coffee table. They had a subscription. SI had thoughtful and knowledgeable journalists that had deep connections into teams, scouts, players, leadership, right? Mm -hmm. They knew what was going on. They had the, the DNA of sports, right? What's it, Bard's not going to have that. Chat GPT's not going to have that. And this is just, we're just going to talk about a microcosm of sports mm -hmm. for all, all of journalism. This is the key. You don't, the, the tech doesn't have these types of connections, right? Mm -hmm. These relationships, these insiders, right? Or the experience. So for me, I really think that what we have to do, especially from a journalism and, and news outlet standpoint, is we have to take a look at new, new business models because if we do lean heavy into chat GPT and, and BART or any large language model, it's just going to all start coming out as generic shit, right? And that's what's going to happen. It's kind of like music in, in, for, for, for a while on yeah. uh, adult contemporary radio stations. It sounded like the same shit over and over and over. That's what's going to happen. So I think we'll take a look at business models, change business models, and people will still have a role. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I cannot underestimate uh, enough how important Sports Illustrated was uh, to my childhood. Uh, only Playboy uh, as a magazine had more of an impact on <laughs> Talking on about the I swimsuit was. edition? Yes. Is that I what mean, you're talking uh, about? Well, yeah, just that one. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, although I didn't have to sneak SI from my dad right. uh, to check yeah. it out. Yeah. All you kids on Pornhub uh, can remember how lucky you are to have on-demand porn. Anyway... Um, I, I used to cut out the, the, the covers and put them on my wall. I remember, yeah. uh, Celtic pride oh, yeah. with Larry bird putting on the wall. I remember like, uh, anyway, it, it was a staple in my, in my upbringing. Uh, it, it, they just didn't change with the times. Uh, we've got right. barstool and other online components. You have sites like, and services like that, that have now given us Pat McAfee and celebrities mm -hmm. that are now putting content out that is more digestible, fun, controversial, et cetera. Yeah, and the, yeah. there's just less room for real journalism uh, going forward. Now, I think what's going to happen SI is similar to Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond was bought by Overstock, I think. So it was like a new internet thing, like, oh, here's this brand that people know and trust and has t decades of, of trust built into it. Let's buy it. And then turn into whatever the hell we want. Uh, and my mm -hmm. guess is maybe Barstool will come by, uh, by SI or maybe um, you know some other media company. I think the more interesting aspect of this is creating an entire publication on the backs of AI. In other words, creating something that has the look of real people writing real stories. And in the background, it's simply automated, uh, you know, generative AI profiles of people who don't exist. And stories mm -hmm. that are churned out that are just sort of standardized, no nuance, no perspective. Chat GPT right. spits out uh, a new story about the Bucks versus the Lakers on Monday, and it just churns out content. And it's already got SEO uh, trust. I'm sure SI has been online since you know early days, and so these sites and these this content will rank. They'll probably gunk it up with ads and pop ups and paid links and paid stories. 
and it will eventually suck and die out. Uh, so it is a sad story, but I do think that more and more of this automated content creation, even if it's a hybrid of like, hey, we have enough stories that look human and are, are nuanced mm -hmm. enough that we can throw in this crap and just keep the Google gods happy by creating content. So SI is, is just sort of the tip of the iceberg, the, the canary in the coal mine. I think this is going to be a story that we continue to talk about. I know the LA Times had a big layoff, uh, I think, this week. So we're going to see local papers. And by the way, local local news media has been gutted. Uh, these these sto like political stories locally, uh, the, the Castro congressman, you know, local media knew about that. They just couldn't get it out. There wasn't a paper that everyone read that they could uh, learn about this It's all business guy. model. It's yeah. all business model. They were paid by the fucking classifieds, which are dead. If yeah. they would have found a different stream of revenue, we would not be having this discussion. It's business model. It's period. too late. This is all great stuff. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's too late. I think there's could really? be a revival. Yeah. I, I do. I think there could be a revival because what we're going to have is a bunch of bland shit that's coming out from AI. I love your optimism. I love your optimism. <laughs> that's why I'm here. Listen to I'm an here. ad and we'll be right back, people. LinkUp is the leading provider of deep, accurate, and actionable labor market data. Unique in that we only get job listings from the one source of truth, the employer's website. By going to the source, we avoid all the duplicate and expired job listings that plague job boards and thereby other job data sets. Our data offers the clearest window into employers of all types and sizes throughout the world for an ever-growing number of use cases and applications. All right, Chad, can I interest you in some Google as our final story? Oh, yes. A little, little, little pivot Please. there. I wanted to talk That's about weird. I want I wanted to talk about a farting farting airline passenger. Uh, but Chad wanted to talk <laughs> about Google, so here we go. Google is Sorry, attempting to reduce reduce its workforce in South Korea, but some employees are refusing to resign. <laughs> about ten out of roughly eight hundred workers in Seoul accepted the company's suggestion to resign. But Korean labor laws may protect them from dismissal without just cause. Google has faced industry-wide layoffs, leading to the formation of a union of 100 workers in Korea to address job security concerns. The union aims to negotiate voluntary resignations with the company rather than workers accepting recommended resignations from Big G. Chad, what are your thoughts on <laughs> what sounds like a, uh, a an action movie from the 80s? Bruce Willis needs to come in and, and save these uh, save these workers. What you got? Yeah, well, I mean, it, we just heard Brittany earlier during shout outs talk about, well, because you overhired now, well, you fucked me, right? Bloating staff is purely irresponsible. We've seen all these companies who like men, a lot of the fang companies, right? they bloated their ranks because they had the money to and because they obviously trying to steal or at least keep great talent away from their competitors. That's irresponsible. They were yep. bloating their ranks, hiring staff to keep them away from, you know, your competitors. That's anti-competitive, uh, right? That is totally anti-competitive. So what has Google done here in America? Well, like all the other fan companies, they just go to a pure layoff. Mm -hmm. If we had a system like this, <laughs> they couldn't do that. They couldn't do that. They would have to be responsible yeah. Right. So what do we do to ensure that companies uh, like Google become responsible and curb anti-competitive measures? Well, it sounds like countries like South Korea and France have the answer. There are, there are consequences to business actions, but unfortunately, the consequences only fall on the employee, not the employer. Mm -hmm. These types of measures would make companies think twice about who they hire how they hire and being more responsible. We focus way too much on the shareholder. Although in this case, yeah. this brings the shareholder and the stakeholder together. We have to focus on the shareholder and we have to focus on the stakeholder, the employees, because if we don't, we might just have to keep them around. Come on, Google. Come on, Google. You know, <laughs> it's, it's uh, fucking awesome. So, so cult culturally, whether you agree or not, uh, America is really good at firing people. 
Yeah. There are very little government regulations. Not CEOs. Very, yeah. Well, yes. And there are golden parachutes that, that workers typically don't yes. get. But yeah. we are really yeah. good at hiring fast and firing fast. And when American companies take that mentality to Europe, parts of Asia, et cetera. Uh, <laughs> and they think they can just lay off people. I love these suggestions. Like we're suggesting yes. that you leave the you company uh, immediately. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so culturally, like it just doesn't vibe uh, with what Americans uh, consider. And American companies is, need to start thinking like, hey, if we're, if we're setting up shop in this country, what are we getting into? And to Chad's point, like, let's slow down the hiring. Let's like be thoughtful around this because it's going to be really hard to fire these people if we make a mistake and America is just a really, Oh, that's not going to happen here. It'll be a fire people. No, that it ain't happening. That's so much. There's no government like reality that I could ever think about in America where we, we turn into something like that. Yeah. Cause we don't give a shit about our employees. That's the problem. Yep. All right, Chad, I'm pulling an audible. I'm talking about the farting, uh, farting (laughs) guy on the, on the airlines. Okay. Quick, real quickly, an American Airlines flight from Phoenix to Austin was reportedly delayed when a passenger uh. loudly passed gas and engaged in a confrontational exchange with others. <laughs> the incident led to the plane returning to the gate and the gassy passenger was removed from the flight. The confrontation caused a delay of up to 30 minutes. I mean, what a butthole. You know what I'm saying? Like, am I right? Can, can we all just breathe a sigh of relief uh, that this issue was was uh was was came to a close uh and by the way when is elon going to take us all to uranus we out we out thank you for listening to what's it called the podcast the chad the cheese brilliant they talk about recruiting they talk about technology but most of all they talk about nothing Just a lot of shout-outs of people you don't even know. And yet, you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses and not one word. So weird. Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way, you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chadcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!